you, let me just pause it right there. You're saying uh, if Jesus would one day be the Messiah, but is not yet, would there not be theories out there to say, well, yeah, because he's he's coming like die for our sins and all that stuff, but he hasn't come back as like the reigning king yet. That's like still to come. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's still like going to happen at some point. So it's true that he has not yet put all his enemies under his feet, right? Mm -hmm. And yet the New Testament speaks of him as, as being exalted at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself says, all authority after the resurrection has now been given to me in heaven and on earth. Like, okay, yeah. um, the, the, the disciples in Acts speak of, use the Psalms, Psalm 2 and other places to speak of him as, as the reigning rightful Messiah, that the nations rage against him, <laughs> against Yahweh and, and his anointed, the Messiah. But, you know, he's, he's God's enthroned, he is the God's enthroned, mm. you know, king. So it's true that he hasn't yet um, exercised his judgment uh, and, and stuff, but that, that hasn't happened yet. He hasn't fully established his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. Um, and yet it, it, it takes us, it's actually an analogous situation to David, I think. David's life, where David is anointed king, he's the rightful king, but he wanders around <laughs> for a while before, <laughs> before sort of God gives him um, control over his enemies, right? Okay. So that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And again, all of the like the, the disciples would would never allow, you know, to say, well, we'll give allegiance to some other ruler, king of Israel. Because mm -hmm. and wait, you know, mm -hmm. no, they're like, no, Jesus. That the whole the whole idea is Jesus is the Messiah, and once the Messiah has come, you, you he's the king. And mm -hmm. if if he has a weird twist and turns, um, for how he runs his kingship, that's kind of his prerogative, not <laughs> not ours, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So and this yeah. is, I mean, this is how the gospels open up. So um, Matthew opens up with like really highlighting the Davidic identity of Jesus, the book of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David. And, and then there's his genealogies that are structured around. Um, so it goes from Abraham to David, from David to the exile, which is the loss of the Davidic kingship. And then the exile, the loss of the Davidic kingship to Jesus being born, i.e. the return of the Davidic kingship. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's, I mean, um, the wise men, right? Um, are, sorry, the, um, the people, the, sort of the scribes and the, and the priests mm. recognize, they tell Herod, um, and the wise men, oh, you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means among, least among the rulers of Judah for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel, right? There's this, um, understanding right away that this, this is the true rightful King of Israel. And, or in Martin Luke's gospel, we, we read that, um, the angel, right? The angel Gabriel speaks to Mary when she announces, when he announces the birth, the uh, conception and says, don't be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And I mean, that's how Luke chooses to, you know, mm. kick off his gospel. And then Zechariah, says the same thing in his, in the Benedictus, blessed be Yahweh, God of Israel, before he has visited and redeemed his people, he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show us the steadfast love promised to our fathers, etc. Um, so that, like that front loads, the whole, the whole expectation is the King has the Davidic Messiah, the the true King of Israel has, has, re has arrived. And from then on, what it means to be part of Israel, um, has to politically, I mean, like nation, mm -hmm. the nation of Israel in a sense, um, means understands that these aren't metaphors that, that it's not like the new Testament mm -hmm. authors is, are saying nice, nice, cute, you know, theological things about Jesus, but that they genuinely believe that this is the rightful descendant of David who is the rightful heir to the throne of, of Israel. So would, would people that, that have this other interpretation that we've been talking about, would they look at that and just say, well, 
that's just figurative or that's going to be fulfilled at some point in the future, but it hasn't happened yet. Like, what's the response there? I don't know. To this passage? It's possible that there would be this. I mean, because no, one, I mean, all Christians recognize that this is true <laughs> yeah. by definition. Yeah. I think there, I do think there has been a tendency to spiritualize it a bit, though. Okay. Um, is it, yeah. And then also maybe to say, well, like you said, maybe, maybe when Jesus actually returns or something like that. Um, I think that's, I think I've heard that one yeah, for yeah. sure, where it's like, well, that, yes, that will happen. It just hasn't mm-hmm. happened yet. Right. But again, you have Matthew 28, Jesus, after, after his resurrection says, all authority has been given to me in heaven mm-hmm. and on earth or in, or what, um, Peter says in the beginning of Acts where he, um, he says, you, you guys rejected him. That wasn't good. <laughs> um, so then he says, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. He believes that, um, he believes that Jesus is, oh, and then he says that, um, that he ascended to heaven and having received the promise from the promise of the spirit from the father, he has poured this out. So this is one of, on, on the, on his followers, right? Mm -hmm. This is one of his Jesus kingly acts, right? As the exalted Messiah, um, he pours out the gift of the spirit, which is what the prophets basically Mm -hmm. said would happen, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah. Or Paul speaks of God having highly exalted him after his humiliation Mm -hmm. and given him a name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. The bowing maybe hasn't happened yet, but the exaltation for Paul has, right? God has exalted, he is the exalted uh, the exalted Messiah. 